In this video, I want to show you how you can profile the quality of your data within Power BI using the Power Query Editor. We're going to look at how you can take advantage of the built-in features that you can use to monitor and track your column statistics, and also how you can get this data out of those visuals into Power BI reports as columns and tables, so you can create your own data quality tracker. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So when you're bringing in data, into Power BI, it will be typically through the Power Query Editor. And from Power Query Editor, you typically do things like cleaning this data or kind of transforming it um, so that you can use it for reporting. And when we say cleaning data, we mean actions like removing unnecessary columns or fixing any errors in the columns that you might find, just so that the reporting or the, the results that you get from your report pages are going to be accurate and without any errors. And within Power Query, either within Power BI or Excel, there are a few built in options that can help you sort of identify these issues and fix them for yourself. So here, let's start our demo within this Power BI report, which is uh, completely empty because I want to show you how to import data into Power BI. So from here, we're going to get our data from an Excel workbook from here on the top left. Um, we will use this profiling data set that I've already created. It's an Excel file that has a few columns. It's basically people information. So names, IDs, email address, things like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to check and uh, analyze the, the quality of this data that we are importing. So we're going to choose uh, the sheets that we have and we're going to hit transform data to open up Power Query. So this is the Power Query editor and it's probably going to look familiar to most of you if you work a lot with Power BI. So you have your queries on the left hand side and then you have your main table that you've imported here in the middle. Let's do a bit of cleaning up on this first before we try to analyze it. So I'm just going to hit use first row as headers just to have the, the headers here as our, as our column headers, essentially. And we're going to rename our query by just making it people. Right. So now this will be the typical way that you would see uh, queries in Power Query. So all of the profiling options will be under the view ribbon here on the top. So under data preview, you will have a few different options here. So when we select column quality here, you will see uh, what is it, it adds a banner just below our column headers here in the query that we have selected. It has some uh, some percentage here, uh, which basically says like for this column, how many are valid values and how many have an error and how many are empty. So that what you typically aim for are valid to be 100%. But if you expect to have empty, then there might be some empty values here. So as you can see in email, for example, we have a few people that have empty email addresses. So if you just scroll a little bit, you will see where those are. So that 14% of this column have empty values. So if not necessarily mean that it's incorrect, it just means that uh, you need to be aware that there are some people that don't have an email address. Same thing with the dates here. It's just a random date that I've added here, but it's saying that 3% of the columns here have no values. Error is basically if you have a value or uh, in that column that isn't the same as the type of that column, which at the moment we actually haven't defined yet. But just imagine putting, uh, let's say, characters in a column that's meant to be numbers. So having it like that um, will throw an error here. So um, this is a chance for you to see and fix those issues before you load them into your Power BI report. So let's just say for demo sake, we have this um, empty values here that we actually we don't want to see them at all. So from our column quality sort of banner here, you will have some suggested ways that you can clean this up. So you have the ability to just remove empty values, and which will just remove those rows completely. But you also have other options on how you can clean up this date, maybe instead of removing the empty values, you just want to replace them or change them into something else like saying none or saying NA, um, you have different options that you can use to sort of clean up here suggested for you. So 
from here, let's go through just changing all of the types within our columns. Now you can do this individually by clicking the, the individual column, clicking the icon next to it, and then just changing it to what you think it should be. So in this case, maybe it's just text. So if you just click that, it will just change that into a text type column. You will know that it's changed that data type by that sort of changing icon there on the top left. But a faster way is by letting uh, Power BI define it for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Control A, which will select all of our raw data. We're going to go to Home. And under Data Type, we'll just use... Actually, no. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so under transform, you will have this option detect data type, which Power BI does a sampling of your column and sees sort of what data type is appropriate. So in this case, as you can see, it's detected that for the ID column, we have a lot of numbers and ma mainly just numbers. So it's converted that into a number the date because there are date values there. It's just converted it into a date type column and that's it. So let's go back to the view ribbon here and uh, let's take something else here in the data preview. So when we ticked the column distribution, as you can see, it's added a few more information here on the banner underneath our column headers. So you now can see the distribution of your data, how many of your values within those rows are distinct or unique. And if you click the column profile, it will give you even more information about the column, like giving you different statistics. So if we click ID, for example, you will see that there is a new view here at the bottom, which gives you a kind of sample of the different distributions that you have, different column stats, standard deviation, average, max. Not all of these are relevant, but it's just gives you a taste of like what information is in that column. What's interesting to note here, as you can see, is the basic information here count, which says that we have a thousand rows within within this column. Whereas if you look at the actual Excel file itself, you will notice that you will have more than 1000 rows. So we have about 1006 rows. So already that value is incorrect. And uh, and that's because column profiling in Power BI, or at least in Power Query, by default only looks at the top 1000 rows. So you'll know that it's profiling only a subset by looking on the top left, uh, sorry, on the bottom left, you will see it says here column profiling based on top 1000 rows. And that's being done to make the refresh of your Power Query a lot faster, especially if you have bigger data instead of scanning and getting all of the different rows that you have within your file, it instead just samples the first 1000. The problem with this though, is that if you have any problematic values on any rows above that 1000 rows, it won't be detected here. Um, so for example, here, you can see that um, there are no errors, um, everything is fine. But what you'll notice if I hit close and apply, which basically is when we load this into our data model in Power BI, you'll see that there is an error, right? But it didn't get triggered by the column profiling. So let's click view errors to see what that is. So here, as you can see, it's our row number 1005, which is beyond the top 1000. And the problem is with the date. So if I hover over that error, you will see that we have an incorrect date here. So it's tried to parse this as the date column or as a date value, but it's not valid. So it's given as an error, but it didn't give us an error in the preview because it was only looking at the first 1000. So there is an easy way to fix this. So if we just delete this error here and delete this group as well. So if we go back here and you can change what is being profiled by instead of looking at the first 1000, instead look at the entire data set. So if you click that, you'll see that now you can see the profile is giving us the error. So there is a problem, which then gives us a few different options to fix this, either remove the error or just replace it into null. So typically instead of removing them, I would just replace it. So if I just click replace errors with null, that will fix that issue. So you can see that it's all fixed now, no errors. And if we hit close and loads, that should be no problem. There we go. So if you just go back to the Power Query here, as you can see, obviously, as we click through all of these different columns, these distribution and the statistics are actually quite handy. 
I mean, not all of them. If you look at them, uh, the context is not always there. But depending on the date type of your columns, it will give different statistics, which might be quite handy to, to explore outside of Power Query. And in fact, you might want to get it into a table so that you can track it with a separate sort of tracker. So a way for you to do this is actually by using this function in Power Query. And one option that you can use from here is the table profile function within the Power Query formulas. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to start by creating a blank query here. And in the first step here, our source will need to be table dot profile. And then within this open and close parenthesis, we will just give it the name of the table that we want to profile. So we'll just give it people. If you hit enter, voila. So you can see the statistics that you might be interested in things like how many values there are, how many distinct values there are, uh, average standard deviation. So you can analyze it for yourself and just make sure that the quality of your data that is coming into your ports are always good. And that's really it for this video. I hope you are now a little bit more familiar with some of the tools that you can use within Power Query to kind of analyze the cleanliness and the quality of your data. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.